started here. Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining me today. It's Alan Barry Labucan with the Rocks and Stocks News uh, Show. Um, you know, I'm a big proponent of investors doing their homework in uh, in the companies that they own, no matter what the size they are. And I've got a special guest in Luke Tenhave. I hope I said his name correctly. Um, he and I uh, frequent uh, uh, CEO.ca on a pretty regular basis, and I've been watching his career. And recently he... Um, he started a website that I think all investors in the mining sector uh, should know about. So I invited him on to give us a guided tour of his uh, golddiscovery.com. Luke, thank you for joining us. Thanks, Alan. Thanks for having me. Well, um, uh, Luke, uh, why don't you talk about, I've been playing around a little bit with your, um, your new website, golddiscovery.com. And um, why don't you talk about the genesis of it? Why did you start the site? Yeah, that's a good point. Um, yeah, like you said in, in the introduction, uh, we have been on the CEO side for many years. Uh, we have been looking into mining stocks for many years. And over time, you get ideas like, hey, I want to find this data or I want to find that data, uh, especially if you are really a due diligence investor. Some people may be buying based on charts or based on the hype because sometimes it's good to just go along with the hype and uh, put your money out there. But I was more like a due diligence investor and there are several tools online for that. Um, one of them is Stockwatch, which is which is good, an old one, but a good uh, resource to find things like um, directors, where, where have they been in the past, which companies have they have they been running. And they have a lot of different features, but uh, it's pretty old. And there were many other things that I couldn't really find easily. So I had to do a lot of uh, digging, opening a lot of reports. And I had a I had the idea to start a site that make things easier, like to, to make due diligence a bit more fun, to make it easier to find things. And I was thinking about it for many years, but thinking is not enough to to really get something out there and um, when I quit my job in the oil and gas in 2021 I decided to make this my focus next to my own investments and so I made a like a rough design and uh, we started building the sites after having some conversations with different developers uh, we had a bit of headwinds in the beginning um, we couldn't really find the goods um, we had a couple of issues with the, with the first development team so I had to look for a new team, which delayed the, pro the process a little bit by six, seven months. Uh, then, then we found a good team to work with, and um, and and they have been working on the on the sites now for about ten months, eleven months. And uh, from the beginning, we knew that there are so many plans. There's no way to build it all and and release it. Then we need to release it earlier, and that's why we call this a beta test. So there, we, I think it's enough for people to get an impression what we are trying to do, what kind of um, what the take is that for 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 this platform. And the idea is that people can really um, use our databases. So we have a database of companies, we have a database of insiders, uh, market performance, and it's not unique. I mean, many sites have these type of databases. But you can do a lot of things with it to visualize data, and that is that is I think important to get a good impression of the resource sector, because most sites are designed for all different sectors, and most juniors you don't really care about revenue streams or profit levels. Maybe if you go into the seniors, but if you if you invest in these tiny companies, then you need you look for for different type of things. And that's um, what the site is trying to do, to really make it dedicated for the investor in the resource space. Well, you know, good on you, because I've been in the investing since I was in 1993. So I've been around for a long time. And, you know, in the big cap stocks, it's not hard, hard to find good filters um, to look for specific things. Um, it's much more difficult in the mining space, like you said. You, you know, you end up having twenty-five different windows open, trying to find information that should be at your fingertips. And so, 
I uh, I wanted to congratulate you on your website and thank you as well because um, um, the 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 amount of uh, testing I've done on it so far is minimal, uh, but what I found right off the bat was very powerful. Um, so why don't we get into a screen share, uh, Luke, and you yeah, can sure. uh, give us uh, give the audience an idea of what uh, how to use your site. Yep. Let's do that. Um, let's have a look. Can you see my screen? Uh, now I can. There you go. Yeah, this is uh, not not the platform itself. This is like the introduction page if you're not a user yet. Okay. And what I liked is to show some some real uh, images of due diligence. This is maybe a little bit of a a big mine already. We are looking after the smaller companies. Where is that? Which mine is that? This one I don't know because this one I I got from someone. Oh, but okay. All the other, all the other Im images we have about eight images we got from mining companies. Like this one came from Osino. Cool. They are drilling here in Namibia, and every time you get to the site, you will see a new picture. Uh, I just wanted to show that. That's a nice. So image. that's the landing page for non uh, people that have signed up. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. So this one is from Reunion. They made a big discovery recently. And these companies share the picture and we make credit to them. It's a little bit, uh, we will make a link here that you can go to their page right away. Cool. Um, yeah. So I, I like to, to start off with like real, real images from the field from these little mining companies or exploration companies. Sometimes big ones. So yep. when you first get there, I guess you, the thing is to get started. Yeah, for sure. If you don't have an account, then you have to go to get started. And if you have an account, you can log in over here. Okay. Uh, you can also try if you go to, for example, drill results, you will go to the platform immediately. But what we did is you have, I think, about 15 clicks before you get a message like, hey, you have to register. So yeah. we want to give people the chance to have a look around. But uh, we want to build a little bit of a of a user base. And that's why we decided to give people like a little bit of not time, it's not like a minute, but I think on, on average you can use it for a minute or one and a half minutes and then you get a message like, hey, please register if you want to use it. Um, and that chart you have there, uh, it looks familiar. It's a bunch of news releases of companies in the various different grades they're hitting. Yeah, yeah. Let me just um, go away from here because this is the um, the guest version. I will go to, the, to my own... Um, my own page where I'm logged in. Okay. In, indeed, uh, drill results is one of the last things we added, but I think it could be interesting for people because every day there are like two, 300 messages, news releases that come in. And most people, I think, uh, that invest in juniors want to know the, the, the drill results. Yeah. And sometimes you really have to look hard to find them. And that's why we made a system to show all the results of the, of the day, but then in this format. Uh, where you can really see um, the intercept, the interval in meters versus the grade um, grams per ton. Yeah. So what we do is we, we turn everything into a gold. Equivalent. And those dot plots are from uh, what's the database in the background? Yeah, the database in the background is about two years of, uh, of drill results. And we did it. We, we're not showing all the data because we had to go into databases like the one from Quebec and Ontario and, and the ones that open up all the results. Uh, and it's a lot of work to get all those results out of their system and then to make it like um, into a database. Uh, but in my opinion, it really helps because this is kind of the landscape of drill results. And you can clearly see that not many companies drill a hole of, of 1,000 meters at a gram or more. So if you mm -hmm. are in this region, then you are really have something impressive in my opinion. Yeah, and I think um, maybe on Monday or Tuesday there was a company. Let me have a look. On Tuesday there was one. Yeah, Pacific Ridge. They drilled 500 meters at close to a gram. And then, if you look at the gray dots, you can see it's pretty exceptional. Not many companies drill holes like this. Mm -hmm. uh, so mm -hmm. I think this shows a really nice picture of um, of the results of the week. Of the day, well, the reason can... I like it is that um, in my career, I spent a lot of time in diamonds. And um, mm -hmm. in diamonds, we have to use a lot of the uh, chemical composition of diamond indicator minerals, yeah, uh, as well as um, uh, 
diamond distribution curves. Um, so I've been kind of, I kind of visualize everything that way. And now you've made it really easy for people to, to see where the results plot comparing to other, to a big data set. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I, I also like it a lot myself. And for example, today in Newcrest, they drilled a hole at uh, Bruce Jack, the high grade. Uh, ah, mine in, uh, and look I'm, at this one. I'm fond of that one because I uh, I picked Predium very early in its uh, success. Uh, and I picked it a bunch of times. So when Newcrest bought them out, it was... Uh, uh, I think it probably it was, was about four or five times the average price that I recommended the stock at. So, yeah, I'm a big fan of that project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can remember that. Uh, yeah, that's interesting. And what we try to do is also test a little bit on Twitter. I'm not sure if I can open it quickly, what people like, uh, because um, we are we are building new things right now. and uh, But it's difficult to know. It's not always that, that I like some, something that everyone likes this. Mm -hmm. So yesterday we did a test with, um, let me have a look. I think it's this one with drill results versus the market cap. And this is something we will introduce very soon mm -hmm. that we will have a system, not just an image, but really a system where you can plot the market cap versus the drill holes. And then you will see, for example, that ARK drilled a massive hole, but they only have a market cap of about... 8 million, I guess. Wow. Um, so it's, of course, not always a guarantee uh, because sometimes you have a one meter, uh, a huge intercept over one meter, and that's not necessarily a mine, but it gives you a little bit of a clue, like mostly the big companies, like the companies above two, 300 million drill these massive holes. Yeah. And if out of the blue, one of these small ones drills a hole like that, then maybe it's interesting. Maybe not, but that's the... Uh, well, it's definitely a good reason to do some more homework. Exactly. Yeah. So that's what we will add very soon. Something like this, uh, but then in a chart where you can zoom in yourself and play with the data. Mm. Um, you can even create a watch list and then just click on your own watch list and see if any so you companies in on uh, the data. How did you zoom in on that data? Just uh, for save me some time. Yeah, you can just click somewhere and then go from left to right or from right oh. to left, and then it will it's zoom really in. Really easy. Yeah. Oh, cool. Cool. Yeah. So you can you see can that really... it's in, uh, in a logarithmic scale. So it's from one to 10. So it could sometimes be a little bit misleading uh, because you cannot make it. Um, if you use a normal scale, then it's very difficult to display. So we have a logarithmic scale here. And um, so you, you, the step from one to 10 is close to similar, like 10 to 100. But it's uh, it's a nice way, in my opinion, to to look at the results. Yeah. And get a quick impression and get an idea of where they plot compared to yep. um, their peers and uh, the data set. But if you, you can also select a date range and that's becoming a little bit problematic because if you take a big range and you apply, then you get too many labels in this. Uh, oh, this is not even that bad. Uh -huh. uh, let me take my watch list. Uh, but if I heard about something in the last week and I forgot the name or something, it's uh, you could use yeah. that filter. You can use the filter, but right now it's too much to display. So then you can uh, you can use some filters to or just zoom in. Uh, in the future, we may also uh, give you the option to make the label smaller with only a symbol, for example, mm -hmm. uh, and then it's easier to display like uh, and what happens if you click on that on the name like i see osisco mining up there right now there's no you cannot click on the symbol and go to the news release but within about well let's let's say a couple of weeks there will be a link behind it so if you click on the dot or you click on the label yeah it will go to the news release okay uh, right right now we only give this tooltip basically so you will see um, the details of those of that drill hole in this case, you can see the full name of the company, the project name, and uh, the primary metal, uh, the, the full intercept, the depth it was drilled from, yep. and also the gram meter number. So that's your drill section, drill results section of the website, and you yep. can you have a bunch of uh, of uh, filters there that one can use, um, and so. 
what are some of the other dashboard news companies market yeah, landscape yeah. before we leave the drill uh, topic uh, i want to show one more thing if you go to the news page all the news will come in um sorted by by date and time but uh -huh. if you click on the gram meter column then you will see all the drill results of the day it will load a little bit and then you see like the the top five or top 10 drill results of this day oh wow and cool. if you if you take the five day for example you get all the results sorted by so newcrest has the best hole in five days technico has the second one and then and then pacific ridge so you can just see all the different uh, results behind the news release uh huh. Wow. Yeah. In gram meters. In gram meters. So that's again not telling the full story, but it gives you an impression. And if you're interested, you click on it, and then you can read the news release yourself uh, to see if you like it. Wow, that's uh, that's pretty powerful because you know it uh, that can start to help people um, you know really quickly sort of focus in on doing your homework on specific companies that have had impressive drill results yeah i think um it's it's helpful and there will be some new updates on drilling soon uh, which will make it even a bit easier uh, but that's uh you will see that within so does that weeks. give you the interval length and the grade or uh right now this is just the news page so you will only see the company name the headline yeah. the price uh, when the news was released and the market cap when the news was released okay. and the exchange and the uh, outstanding number of shares mm -hmm. and the gram meter number. You could even filter on the gram meter number if you want to. Um, oh, for example, you, if you, oh. if you so it has a full year, say, for, example, for example, you want everything over a hundred. Yeah, exactly. Or 200, then you get all the results above 200. Oh, wow. This year. Ah, uh, there's one of my, my top picks, I 80 gold. Oh yeah. They, they consistently kick out great results. Yep, that's uh, there's another way to follow your own companies. Um, if you go to the dashboard, yeah, and then you go to the watch list. Uh, you could create a watch list like Allen's stocks, and then. I prepared a little bit for this. I went to uh, the companies you interviewed in the last couple of months, the, the, oh, wow. those companies. And if you, I don't know them by heart, but um, if you want to add them, then you can, for example, say Sokoman, you click on it, you, you want to add one uh, I-80 and oh, wow. Nine Mile, and you want to add Paycor. It's just a way to add um, companies to your watch list. Yeah. P2, awesome. I saw in your interview. Timberline. Yeah. Awesome. Let's just leave it with this. And then you can say, I want to add, add them to Alan's stocks and add it to the watch list. So right now, if you go back to the news, you click, for example, on 2022. And then you click on your watch list. You will just get those companies. And all their news releases in 2022? Yep. yep. Wow. See, I, I, I'm really glad to get you on here, Luke, because you've built a for a beta version. You built a heck of a good uh, a good tool. I mean, I've been playing around with watch lists on CEO.ca and uh, and um, also on Stockwatch over the years. I find CEO.ca is much better for me than. Um, than um, uh, Stockwatch, but I I can see myself quickly putting together a, an entire watch list. I, I can do a couple in here quite easily. Yeah, I think CEO has different strengths. I mean, they have real-time data. They have very good push notifications. So they have, um, they really add a lot of value and uh, I have a lot of respect for what they build, especially if you build a platform like this, then, you realize how difficult it is sometimes. So um, it is, um, I was impressed by CEO before, and of course the user base really grew hard and that's why the quality of the users maybe came down a bit and the quantity went up. Uh, but I think it's really an impressive site and um, so we have a long way to go, but we are building some some different type of features. So what you can do with a watch list here is different um, 
to what you can do on CEO, I think. Well, you know, this sort of stuff is really important to me, um, Luke, because I, I um, back in 2007 from to 2012, I was a regular guest on the um, news uh, television show BNN uh, mm -hmm. here in Canada, up in Canada. And, um, you know, they would call me at, all of a sudden I had to do a show in like, get to the studio in an hour and a half and we want to talk to you about this so you know I, I mean i have a pretty good memory of the companies and the projects and what they're doing but um you know sometimes i would quickly need to get something together and i wish i had this tool back then because it would have helped me dramatically yeah, it's. Uh, I'm happy to hear that. Um, but you need to play around with it a little bit to find out what you can do. Um, yeah. So I'm happy that uh, that you give me the opportunity to explain that a bit. Yeah, for um, sure. So we've gone. Dashboard is is what you go to dashboard. Yeah. Well, dashboard right now, and there's a lot to improve on the dashboard. This is our first version. Uh, there are a couple of features here that may not jump out immediately. Um, on the left-hand side, we've got what we call gold discovery uh, resource indices. Mm -hmm. And basically this is to, you've got the GDX, you've got the GDXJ, and it gives you a really good um, picture of what's happening on the day or on the week in the gold stocks. But mm -hmm. to get that same impression from copper companies or from small prospect generators or from royalty companies, yes. it's more difficult. So what we did is we tried to um, put together a couple of what we call indices, for example, uh, royalty companies, yeah. and you can compare them to each other. So for example, on the one month, the mid tier miners have performed best so far and the copper companies are second. The uh -huh. prospect generators, though, and the diamond companies, they are not performing very well. So within our niche of the resource space, you can compare a little bit how these different um, groups of companies perform against each other. Uh, I think a couple of months ago, the nickel companies were really hot and everybody, nickel companies were on, on top of the list. And now lithium, I think, is doing well. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, on the three months, you can see lithium is number one. So it gives you a good impression. If you want to know which companies are behind this name, then you can click on lithium companies and you will see the names that I selected. Um, if you think other, other how names- how did you used, select those? How did you come up with your index? Yeah, that's of course a little bit, uh, that's always, you know, you can have an opinion about it. I, I just looked at the companies, in my opinion, that are meaningful in, in the lithium space. Okay. Because if you include, for example, eight uh, companies with a market cap of 2 million, and they double because there was ten thousand dollar of volume, then that will not really give you a good impression. So well, I, it it's doesn't a mix of give big you companies. a representative impression of what's exactly. actually happening in the sector. Yeah. yeah. So you still need to be cautious and have a look at the list and think and and have a look if you think this is representative for the lithium space. Uh, we can add another ten or twenty companies, but mm -hmm. there's for example one company with a recent discovery, and of course this one will really pull the Spray average the up. Um, so you have to be careful. I think you have to always look at the list and keep in mind, is it representative for you or not? But um, for me, it's helpful and everybody can give me feedback all the time. So um, I, I get a lot of emails with questions and comments and there will be things that we will have to change. Mm -hmm. But right now I'm quite happy in getting an impression of how the markets are doing. And if you click on royalty well, companies- That's the indexes, indices. Yeah. And then I saw some of the other stuff um, on your dashboard there. So you've got best performers. Yeah, this is one that we need to do a little bit work on. This is just the top 20 of best performing companies um, in one week, just the one week. Mm -hmm. um, so in the future, we will also add the one day, of course, because most comp most sites will show you the one day. I wanted to start with a little bit of longer term view uh, because we cannot really compete yet on the one day because we don't have real time data. Mm -hmm. So I thought, let's just zoom out a little bit and show people the one week, the three months, the one year to see more of a trend, how these groups are do doing rather than what are the companies doing today? Because that's not our 
um, unique selling point, I think. Well, have, and, to, and for in, in reality, Luke, what you're trying to develop is um, investors doing their homework. Exactly. What one day action caters to more is day traders. Exactly. Um, so I, I think this is a pretty good tool there for the kind of people you want to attract to your site. I agree, uh, but it wouldn't. I, I wouldn't mind adding the one day at some point. But right now, I started with this, and the dashboard anyway needs some some better designing, and it's not it's not good enough yet. But it's a good start, and uh, we have. So you, we, you come on the site, you go to the dashboard, and you can get a get an idea of what's hot and yeah, what's exactly. not. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And on the right hand side, you will see discovery performers. Um, so. Basically, we made a selection of discovery companies. And yeah, what is a discovery company? In my mind, a discovery company is uh, a company that drilled a hole at least. So it's not just based on trenching or surface samples. Yeah. Made the discovery by drilling, not by drilling a hundred meter step out, but sometimes a discovery, if you drill a one kilometer step out from a deposit, or well, maybe you can consider it a deposit. Uh, so this is a list of companies that I think that the market considers a discovery right now, and we compare them in performance. So. Um, and how, what's your uh, what's your amount of companies in that discovery performers list? That could oh, right be now, sizable. Right now it's about yeah. Right now it's just about twenty. Uh, but I've, I'm I'm sure that people will have some good suggestions to add another five, but. I don't think this list will become 40 because uh, I, I want the real, the real, in my opinion, best discovery companies out here. And there are a num number of companies in my portfolio that I consider close to discovery, but I don't think they are far enough yet to make it to this list. Mm -hmm. And this list is, well, in general, companies above 100 million market cap, sometimes even close to 500 million or a billion. Mm -hmm. uh, because the market believes that they already have shown enough proof that this could become a mine. And of okay, course, so they're they're more than just exploration success. These are companies that are either moving towards a resource calculation kind of thing. Mm, sometimes, like Great Bear never got it to the resource uh, estimate. Yeah, but, but they had drilled hundreds of holes. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like, but Western so Alaska a just started uh, six. It was a bona fide discovery. Oh, for sure. Okay. Yeah. But we've got, for example, Snowline, which is, I think the market believes that this is a big discovery, even though I think it will take a long time, well, at least a year or something before they will really publish a resource. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's, there's enough data out there, I think, to call this a discovery. If I don't think a Snowline will change soon, but if any of these companies uh, have a couple of dusters and maybe the we can conclude that deposit they are trying to find is not going to be a deposit then we'll take it off the list again got it yeah and what's the top rate metals and this is, ETFs? yeah this is just an easy one this is just all the uh, etfs that are meaningful to the industry so you've got a lithium etf a uranium etf the copper etf so it gives you also like the one on the left but this is more for the bigger companies i find that impression. really cool to look because um you know, a lot of times people in our industry get really focused on gold, uh, silver. Um, but, you know, like I'm I'm expecting some good things out of copper. Um, and uh, so how, being able to compare how the copper stocks are are doing uh, is not as easy. Spe uh, same thing with lithium, another uh, commodity that I'm very interested in. Um, mm. So I, I like that. It, it gives you sort of a, an idea of what's going on with the group of companies. Yeah, that's right. That's the idea to give people on the dashboard a quick impression of what the markets are doing, but specifically oriented towards resource companies and uh, ETFs in this case to give so you an then... impression of. You move over to news, and that's got all the news releases that you can. I used to spend a lot of time on um, on Stockwatch going through the news releases, but uh, this looks really cool. Easy yeah, to... and 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 if you we we've got all the companies in Canada in the database. If you're only interested in mining or resource companies, there's just one click over here. 
Yeah. And then you will just see the resource companies. And I can also filter advanced exploration, carbon credits, yep. production, so you, development. You could, you could like, um, if, if you only want to see exploration, like then you click the these three mm -hmm. and then it will think a little bit and then we'll show you all the companies today that are exploration focused. Awesome. Oh, wow. I'm going to be using that tool a lot because I like to... In when I first got in the business, we didn't have all these tools, and um, um, one of the things that I had a habit of doing was Stockwatch actually had a print version mm. that they would deliver to your office yep. in the morning, and I would go through the print edition looking for news releases that stood out to me. Yeah, that, yeah. that morphed into doing it on uh, online. And uh, I can see that you're going to make my life easier with this, uh, with your website. Yeah, that's a good point. I think Stockwatch had uh, had this, uh, I heard about that earlier, uh, this printed version every week. No, every day. Every, every day. Every day. Oh, yeah. Oh, really? It would come out every day. And I, uh, if there's one piece of advice that I can give new investors into this sector is I kind of consider myself a bit of a connoisseur on news releases. And uh, if you want to get serious about this business, one of the things you can do is read a lot of news releases and you start to pick out yeah. what is the most important. And, um, you know, you can, you, you for example, when I see a news release that has a lot of text in it and uh, and I don't see the table of the results, it's kind of a good filter to me that, um, you know, the company who wrote, the person who wrote that wasn't that impressed with the, and they spent all their time in the news release trying to explain the what they found, not show you what they found. So, yeah, I think that that's a, something to strive for for investors in this sector is become a connoisseur of news releases and you've made it really easy for them to do that Luke. yeah i fully agree that's um i also look for the same things yesterday there was a company that um i think it was a 11 or 10 million dollar company let me just filter for a moment and they wrote a they made a presentation just for that news release to explain the project from from scratch to where they are right now, because they believe that they are in a discovery process. And I didn't do my homework on the company yet, to be honest, mm -hmm. but um, I was impressed by the way they, they presented it because they really showed like, we want to show you what we found. And uh, I'm not sure if I can quickly find it right now. Well, that's another thing, you know, I, I've also been a consultant to public companies and um, you know, one of the things that I, always tried to do was take the technical information and be able to write a news release so that the average investors out there could understand. Mm -hmm. And, and that in itself is a bit of a tool because, you know, you can, so I can sort of assess who wrote the news release inside the company. Um, if it's a geologist, you can, I can tell, Oh, a geologist, this geologist is most, interested in pressing other geologists yeah, when I think right. that how you present the information should be geared towards your audience it's not to impress your fellow geologists it's to help inform the average investor out there yeah I fully agree I fully agree so that, that what you just said you can see that here the company prepared a detailed presentation of the results um, accompanying this release and then they copied this one where they really explain the complete process and why they think they have something significant. Mm. And if you if they make so many pictures and maps and everything to accompany their news release, then I think they they want to tell the market something. So well, this is on my watch list still. To um, that brings up another thing that I look for. I'm always trying to find the companies. I say some companies are trying to mine the public and some companies are trying to find a mine. Yep. And that's a, if that was the only thing you learned about how to look at a news release was to be able to determine, are these guys trying to mine the public or are they trying to find a mine? 
the the maps that you just showed me there tell me that that company is interested in finding a mine. Also, my impression. I didn't do enough work yet to say that's true, but that's my impression. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um. So let's go back to the. Uh, so okay. So then you've got companies as well. What what does companies do? Yeah, companies is basically showing our database. Uh, right now, it shows three thousand companies, a little bit more. Yeah. Let's see again. Um, this includes also since yesterday the Australian companies. Oh wow! Cool. Um, so if you want to see the Australian companies, you click on AU, and then it will just load your Australian resource companies. Oh, and you can filter out just CSE companies, TSX companies, TSX yeah. Venture. So okay, total, and we that's, have that just alphabetized. Lessons. Sorry, once again. The companies are they by alphabetized? Yeah. Okay. Well, you you can choose yourself. Uh, I think on, as a standard, we have um, it sorted on the company name. Yeah. And you can also sort it on market cap, for example. Oh wow. But Australian companies, we don't have much data yet, so we're working. So on I that. could, for example, go to TSX Venture Companies under a twenty million valuation. Yeah, you could do that here. And let's say a minimum of 500,000 to get a little bit of, to get the zeros out. So now you've got all the companies with market caps between five and 20 million. Ah. You can sort it over here. Uh -huh. 500,000 is the, the, the lowest one and 220 million is the highest one in this case. And if you want those companies to have at least um, $3 million of cash in the bank, this is based on the last quarterly. Mm -hmm. You filter, you only get the companies with at least $3 million of cash in the bank. Wow, and look at quickly, you can go out and say, well, there's only 182 companies on the venture between those valuations with that exactly. much cash. Yep. As you're explaining all this, it made me think of John Kaiser. John and I have known each other because, for many years, and we used to do a lot of interviews together. We do uh shows together and the this i know he's going to be all over this website <laughs> after our conversation i'll send him an email and i'll tell him uh uh if you don't mind i'll i'll include you on that email and uh i think you guys will have a lot to talk about because um you, you, this is uh, the kind of stuff that he uh he would definitely be interested in yeah, you're not the first one who told me. I I think he also has a really data driven model. Yes. I've never used his premium side, but um what I what I can see in his presentations is that he also likes this data driven approach. Absolutely. Yeah. And he likes to it, it's not well understood, but he's got a rational speculation model that you know, when I used to do analysis on big companies, I often would look at the price to earnings ratio, the 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 growth, and um, that was easy for me to find on the internet. I could find that information quickly, but being able to graphically analyze companies based on what they found and and how that might project into the future, he's the only one that I've seen with a model like that. And, um, um, but I try to promote his uh, rational speculation model as much as I can. And uh, I, this, this filtering tool you have here is quite impressive, uh, Luke. Yeah, it, it comes from the 2015 times when I was actually writing down one by one, all the cash levels of the different companies, because all those companies were so cheap in 2015 and I wanted to know how much cash they still have in the bank to avoid further dilution at those low levels. Uh, so I really went through like a list, like a paper list of 300 companies or more and just checking one by one the financials. And I think in the meantime, there are more companies that are, are building databases and make it easier for investors to find it. Yeah. But um, I always had this filter method in mind and you can also filter on... Um, 
for example, if you want to find companies that have revenue, because most of our companies don't have revenue, mm -hmm. we made a revenue filter, and this gives you companies with at least a million dollars of revenue. It could be revenue from uh, some option payments, of course, mm -hmm. but it kind of filters out the companies without any revenue. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can also filter on operating income, uh, and then you will shorten the list even more, especially under 20 million. What's market landscape? Is that like a heat map? It's not a heat map. It's um, there are a lot of dots. <laughs> oh man, um, this looks like the chemical composition of diamond indicator mineral charts to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now every dot, of course, is a company. Um, we've got a several different views. Mm -hmm. This is the one market cap versus one month change. Uh, one month ago, all these different dots were below the zero percent line. Mm -hmm. Because uh, all the companies were really at the bottom. Right now, I think some companies came up a bit. If you do the same thing for the full year, the year to date, then you will see that all these companies are below the zero line. And only mm -hmm. only a few exceptions like Go Metals and uh, I don't know this company, but this is probably Patriot, Snowline, Reunion, the big names, you know, this year. Yeah. They are above the zero line. And all the other companies, or most of them at least, are well below. Uh -huh. And if you want to see exploration stage companies again, and you take away all the other ones, and you see only yellow dots, you have the option to get a symbol included, but then it becomes a little bit chaotic. Yeah. So many. you will have to yeah, zoom yeah. in to use that. If you zoom uh, in, then you can zooming. easily get an impression which companies. Uh... Wow. Very cool. So actually, you could use that two ways. You could maybe look at, well, that one's taken off. And do I really mm. want to take a risk on that one? Or do I want to look at below the zero line to find some hidden gems? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Or if you want to look at the bigger companies, the $1 billion production companies. Um, let's just do only $1 billion. Then you mostly see production like Barrick and Franco, probably Newmont. Mm -hmm. So you can easily compare the performance of the big, the majors, or the ones that are between a billion and 10 billion. Uh -huh. oh. And then you can add a symbol, which because now it shows up quite well, I think. Because you don't have as much data. Uh, yeah, well, still company. it's uh, a bit crowded. Wow. Mag. In the future, we will also add some more views here. So uh, now it's just performance, like stock performance. In the future, you will see some revenue, profits, uh, some drill results. Uh, so we will make a lot of different views to make it easier to, to have a look at the market. And that's why I call, I call it market landscape, because right now it's just performance. Uh, we'll include some drill results versus market cap. We will include some profits and margins. And there are some other ideas, for example, uh, so, the cash levels to show the cash levels versus market cap values. So in the future, there will be many more views in this market landscape uh, feature. Okay, we already went over drill results. What's rankings? Rankings is something that we still, we just started with. So it only shows you like, um, again, the performing companies. What The reason we built this feature, well, you can use it just to see the, the best performing companies for every period, like 90 days. Uh, but the other reason is if you go to a company page, like Go Metals, mm -hmm. then we calculate its performance and also rank it. So on the one week, Go Metals is one of the best performing companies out of the 8,000, so 36. So it gives you a little bit of an impression how well a company uh, did in the last um, in the last weeks or last months. And that's why we use the rankings overview mostly. In the future, we will put some vol volume restrictions on it so that at least uh, that the company needs at least $10,000 worth of volume to include them in the list. Otherwise, um, Makes sense. You, Makes sense. you may see companies that went from one cent to two cents. And insiders, obviously, that's insider buying and selling. Yeah, and also here it helps you to filter. Also, this is work in progress, but... Um, for example, if you want to see people with really big transactions, then you click on transactions above $200,000. And then it will show you all the, this is just the last five days, but let's take this year, uh, all the big transactions of the year. And the biggest oh. one comes from, this takes a bit of time. 
Okay. This, this is probably a, an entry error because some people in CDI enter data and they enter it wrongly. Mm -hmm. That's why uh, sometimes you get these, these 500 million figures which are not right. But you can also filter on, for example, the that you, you just want to see common shares, for example, no options. And then it probably already gets better. Mm. Or wow. you want to see um, exploration companies. And then you see Very like cool. big transactions that have taken place um, over 2022. And you can sort them also on the holding. So this is a value indicator. Uh -huh. um, again, if you start at the biggest one, you probably get a couple of wrong values because some people enter the CDI uh, incorrectly. Incorrectly. But for example, you see Agnico bought $11 million worth of Rupert which increased their value to $28 million worth of stock. Mm -hmm. So this is again a database. Um, you can also create one for Eric Sprott, for example. Oh, well. It will load a little bit and then it's... Um... Oh, you can actually on Eric Sprott himself. Wow. Yep. So this will show all his transactions in 2022? That's right, but right now we have a filter, so we probably have to take away those filters to get the full list. Oh, wow. Huh. Cool. Wow. That's impressive. Okay, and so, um, oh, wow, look at that. Man, so he, he bought uh, $57 million worth of uh, Newfound, Off and he novel. sold a bit of First Majestic. He got that off a of novel, I think. Um, okay, so discoveries. Uh, what's this? Yeah, this is a discovery timeline. Um, so here we are adding discoveries between 1950 and today. Oh, all important ones. Oh, wow. Yeah, so the last one we added is uh, Patriot, Lithium Discovery. Uh -huh. and we've got Philo, Philo. a Reunion. And you can see that actually the, uh, we, we think there are not many discoveries, but every couple of months there, there's a meaningful discovery. Right. Of course, it takes a couple of months to realize because that you don't is. know from day one it's a, it's a big discovery, but um, there are quite a few of them. Wow. And some of them, if you, you can click on each of them, uh, and some of all of them have data. Ah, so let's it, it, this. That that's interesting to me because my I I I'm a CEO of a public company, and um, Advanced Lithium, and and we had a project in um, in uh, Kenya that we had a royalty on. I was able to sell the royalty and get a 55 square kilometer property just to the north of Las Chispas, and uh, it's in the same kind of an epithermal vein system, but. It hasn't seen much drilling, uh, and even though there's, they've done a lot of surface sampling, we got it off a royalty company. So, kind of a coincidence there that you pick up Las oh, Chispas. Yeah. yeah, amazing discovery as well. Yeah, very much so. Yeah. What we show oh. here is uh, like a project name, but also when they acquired it. Uh, we we look at what they paid for the actual acquisition. Mm -hmm. um, so it gives you a little bit of a timeline how the discovery evolved from acquisition to making the discovery mm -hmm. and some of the discoveries have a more detailed um, Pod Madden chart, for example, where you can see this. wow Arizona mining I've been talking a lot of Arizona mining lately because John Kaiser and I did a bunch of interviews about this particular company uh, when it was around 30 to 50 cents and uh, but why I'm talking about it now is um, I 80 Gold and uh, Paycor are looking for carbonate replacement deposits, just like this Taylor discovery. And I think their ultimate buyout they got bought out for about a billion and a half. So it just goes to show you how important these CRD discoveries are. Mm. Um, and um, there's your past decade big winner yeah. in uh, CRD discovery. Yeah, it's interesting. This is the one that everybody refers to when they talk about CRDs. Absolutely, absolutely. But also some of the older ones, like uh, 
I'm sure you know the Voices Bay one. Everybody Absolutely. knows it. Absolutely. Then you've got a uh, the same thing. Ooh. So how did they acquire it? They uh, bought it for uh, almost nothing. And, then uh, and you the go royalty. back to Gras there, where uh, Diamond found it. Look at that! Wow. There you go, folks. That's why we invest in this mining business, looking for another diamond yep. field. This is the attraction. Yes. Just for people not to forget about our little diamond business there, you got Lac de Gras, I just saw. Yep. So there's another reason why we look uh, look for diamonds, folks. Uh, not many companies are doing that right now, but... Um, uh, you know, that's the same as Diamond and Aber back in the day before they made their big discoveries. And um, I'm always looking for diamond stories. Uh, the only one I follow out there right now is Arctic Star. Well, no, no, that's not true. I'm following several, but Arctic Star is one that I think has something special because they're right beside uh, where uh, Akadi and Diavik are up in the Northwest Territories. Yeah, I'm also watching a couple of them. It's uh, tempting to try a little bit because diamonds, nobody talks about diamonds right now, but I think that's the time when you should carefully start well, considering it. You know, usually when I'm looking at contrary plays, Luke, I, I'm i waiting for the commodity to turn around. Mm. In the case of diamonds, diamonds are right now trading at their all-time highs, and yet there's only about 10 companies that are still really in the diamond business. But you have these, these waves of, of um, you know, so you, have, you have months of palladium becoming the biggest uh, metal in the world. And then suddenly everybody jumps into nickel and then it's rare earths again. And then it's vanadium. It's um, Why don't it's you uh, go off the screen share, Luke? Because we're getting into the topic that I kind of wanted to close on, which was the state of the market and observations that you've made. And yeah, you're right. You know, you get the flavor of the month. Um, but I'm trying to find the next flavor of the month all the time. Mm -hmm. you, yeah. You're, you're still on screen share there, Luke. Shall I take it away? Yeah, yeah. We can have a closing conversation here yep yep um because you've been pretty kind with your time we've been uh i think we could talk for hours about your site and i think that uh, we've got a i'm going to start using it a lot more and talk to some friends of mine and push it push them uh that i think will like your site but um general market sort of stuff what are you seeing out there these days luke uh um I think we're getting the the big topic. I think you were at Beaver Creek. You probably heard a lot of people talking about the Fed pivot. Yeah, that's right. Uh, but I, I tried to stay away from, I, I listened to those conversations and I'm not getting too involved in it because I tried, I prefer to talk about things I think I have some knowledge about. And there are so many people that know more about uh all the different factors at, at play with the inflation and with all with the Fed doing things and not doing things. So um, I always try to stay away from it because I'm sure I'm going to say stupid things that other people will tell me <laughs> like, hey. So it's it's I, I try to focus on these junior miners and I'm for sure I do follow the the, the macro. So when um, you were at Beaver Creek, what was what were you doing? Due diligence, going around talking to companies, yeah, yeah. You know what they're doing. I want to find uh, well. Some I want to talk to companies I already know to find out if there's updates to get some context on news releases, um, and um, and and potentially find news stories um, because I think this is the time to at least consider buying again. And you never know when the low is in, but um, if you have, and of course everybody says that, but when you have the right teams uh, that can raise money when when it's needed and preferably they have a lot of cash in the bank still so they don't have to raise right now but they do have an interesting project that for some reason is not attracting any attention right now but for a very specific reason you could see being resolved then sometimes you can buy things for five million dollar market cap and if things turn around it could become a hundred million dollar stock again and well, I think you that's know this industry that's the industry that we that you have these opportunities and they come and go all the time you touched on something there that my experience i think can give you a little bit more color 
Uh, I remember the, uh, the late 1990s and 2000, the year 2000, and I'm seeing a lot of parallels. Back then, you know, the U.S. dollar was strong, commodity mm. prices were weak, and valuations were, everybody was shaking their head. How can this company be this cheap? Um, and, and you said something about now is probably a good time to start looking at buying. I couldn't agree with you more because I'm seeing the exact same parallels as I saw in 2000, as I'm seeing right now. U.S. dollar strength, gold, silver, copper, trading weekly, weak, and, um, and valuations being a tremendously cheap. Um, those kind of opportunities don't come along very often. Um, we've seen some kind sort of re similar to that market after 2000, but I can't remember looking at valuations and, uh, and uh, the price of the metals and the strength in the U.S. dollar that parallels the, almost exactly to 2000. So I, yeah, I think I it is a good time to be looking at opportunities. That's why I'm putting a, out a lot of If you make a comparison, shows. yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh, if you make a comparison to a certain period, I think this period uh, looks more like, like you said, the 2000s rather than the 2013 to 15 kind of period, 12 to, 12 to 15. Yeah. And maybe, maybe the 70s as well. So you never have a complete repeat. But when I'm looking at similar periods, it's, it's indeed around 2000 and mid 70s that I think. Um, are periods that give some good clues about what could happen. Well, I than, think uh, more I so think than 2015. We got a nice little closing thing there because uh, you've got we we both see the market similar to 2000, which I think should motivate investors to be doing their homework and looking for opportunities. And you've got a website that they can do that on. I was a bit frustrated that I didn't act in 2020 because I think 2020 was a good year to start, but starting in a, in a, in a bad time is also sometimes uh, not a, like CEO became a big site and they started in 2014 or 15. So before people got excited again, yeah, I think starting in a bad time is not always a bad thing. Absolutely. Especially if you can get some noise out there and make people aware of what you're doing. And I'm glad you came on my show at Rocks and Stocks News to to uh, to talk about your site, Luke. Yeah, thanks, Alan. Really appreciate it. Well, I'm uh, I'm going to close off. Was there any closing things you wanted to say, Luke, uh, that we uh, uh, didn't cover? No, I think we covered everything. Um, I, I just want to say that people can reach out if they have any questions or comments or ideas. Um, I'm always available through my, you can find my contacts on the site. Awesome. Well, thanks a lot, Luke. And I'm going to close it off and we can have a little chat at the other end. All right. Thank you. So there you go, folks. Um, you know, I close all my interviews and my reports off with uh, that my shows are for information purposes only. It's important for you to speak with your financial advisors and do your homework. And uh, I'm a, I say that because I'm a big proponent of investors understand, doing their homework and understanding why they're investing in a company. And the reason that I think that's so important is because then you won't be uh, making foolish investment decisions. Your investment decisions will all not be great, but at least you'll be informed and not be making them for the wrong kind of reasons, you know. Um, and uh, I think that that's crucial for investors. And I, 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 I was really impressed. I saw Luke's uh, post on Twitter that he had started this site recently, and uh, I jumped on it right away. And I think it's a tremendous tool for investors that are investing in this sector to uh, visually see what what to look for, what they how they want to filter, how they can look for specific things, and uh, it just goes to what I always talk about and the importance of investors doing their homework. So go check out golddiscovery.com and use it. Send Luke an email. Send me an email, and uh, I, I think that uh, this is going to be one of my main sites that I check out every day from now on. 
On that note, have a great day and we'll talk to you soon.